Hello, hello, welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I want to talk about Class A amplifiers and specifically BJT based Class A amplifiers. What we're looking at here is the set of characteristic curves for a transistor. This is relating the collector emitter voltage to the collector current for a number of different base currents. Now where this comes into play in a Class A amplifier is that a Class A amplifier is an amplifier biased such that the operating point allows a full swing of the output for a full swing of the input. So basically on the characteristic curve what this means is that if let's say this point up here is my the saturation current and then down here is my cutoff voltage. Now the load line is the straight line between IC sat and VCE off. A class A amplifier will be biased to approximately the middle of this load line. So right about there. So if you have a circuit, a BJT circuit that looks like this, here's my class A amplifier, VCC, my two biasing resistors at the base, in the class A amplifier, the power amplifier, the RC here is considered the load and we have the input applied here. So given a full swing of the input, we're going to expect a full swing of voltages across the output. So basically, we will the, the output voltage is going to swing all along this load line, never actually reaching saturation and never actually reaching cutoff. So going back and forth on this line, so you get a full swing of the output for a, for a full input swing. Another way to put that, if I was to plot out the input and the output voltage, so let's say my input voltage was something like this, then my output voltage or my voltage across RC would be something like that. The main takeaway from this is for a class A amplifier, it is biased so that the output voltage can swing the full 360 degrees when the input voltage also swings a full 360 degrees. A couple of key advantages of a Class A amplifier. First is the circuit simplicity. So there is only one BJT in this in this very basic uh, Class A amplifier. Another advantage is that there is no crossover distortion. And uh, in Class B amplifier, the Class AB amplifier video, I show you what a crossover distortion is. The key disadvantage, though, for a Class A amplifier is the efficiency of the circuit. So let's look at this, this power consideration. Here we have a basic class A amplifier based around this BJT here. The resistor here at the collector, the RC resistor, is the load for this power amplifier and the power, the energy added to the system is VCC and my input signal is the V in. So now let's look at power. The input power, which I will designate as P in, comes from the DC source, so I'm going to designate it also as DC. This input power is going to be the VC, the voltage across the whole circuit times the collector current, the DC collector current. The output power is the power used up by this load here. The signal is coming from V in, but then that, that V in gets converted into the output voltage across RC here. And since V in is an AC signal, the output power is also going to be an AC signal. And since it is AC, we're dealing with the RMS and it's going to be equal to the RMS collector current times RC, but it could also be equal to the voltage across RC, again RMS, all squared divided by RC. And with these two powers, the input power and the output power, we can calculate the efficiency. The efficiency, of course, is going to be the amount of usable power, so that's how much power gets to the output, divided by how much power we apply at the input, and then times 100%. I mentioned earlier that the biggest disadvantage of these Class A amplifiers is their power efficiency. Well, I want to go through an exercise where I'm going to calculate the maximum power efficiency for this circuit. And then any actual circuit will actually have an efficiency that is less than that. 
Okay, the point where I'm going to have the maximum power input and output is when I'm biased right in the middle of the load line right here. The reason that this is the Q point where I will have the maximum power is because then this allows maximum swing towards the saturation current and maximum swing towards the cut towards the cutoff voltage. So this I will have the maximum efficiency, the highest efficiency when my output can swing in both the positive and negative direction the most. So I'm going to have the maximum input power when I have ICQ at the saturation current over two, so half the saturation current. And I can expand this out and IC sat can also be written as VCC over RC and this is all divided by two. Multiplying these terms out, I get VCC squared over two RC. So that expression is going to be my input power when I have the highest efficiency. I'm going to have the highest output power when the voltage across RC swings between zero and VCC, and when the collector current, or the load current, which is the same thing, swings between zero and and the saturation current. So that gives me a maximum peak to peak voltage of VCC and a maximum peak to peak current of IC sat. But of course for power I want to deal with RMS. So the RMS voltages and currents will be the peak to peak voltages or currents divided by two divided by the square root of two. So my maximum output power is going to occur when my voltage across RC is at the max and the current through RC is also at the max. And of course these are RMS and that so that maximum RMS value is going to occur when VCC is the peak to peak maximum divided by two to give me the peak maximum divided by the square root of two to give me the RMS. Same thing over here for the RC. I'm going to rewrite this RC as the RC max is the saturation current which is going to be VCC over RC. That's the peak to peak max. So uh, that's the peak to peak max. So I'll divide by two to give me the peak max and divide by the square root of two to give me the RMS max. Multiplying all of this out, I get VCC squared over 8RC. Now I'm going to put the maximum output power and the maximum input power together to determine the maximum efficiency. So there's my input power, there's my expression for the output power. I can see a lot of these terms are going to cancel, VCC squared cancel, RC cancels. Multiply that by 100%, and what I'm going to end up with is one over four times 100% or 25%. So this shows that the maximum efficiency that I can have in a class A BJT amplifier is 25% efficiency. That's the maximum. A real circuit will have something that's less than 25%. So I've shown you a little bit about Class A BJT amplifiers. Hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.